What's going on guys, Sticks here with the Token Minorities, bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO, and today I am bringing you a deck that I found on Pokebeach.com, centered around Magnezone and Ultra Necrozma GX, or <laughs> Ultra Necrozma, wow, I wish. Uh, that hasn't come out yet, but Duskmane Necrozma GX, and before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you guys liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, click that subscribe button, helps us out a ton and let's us do more cool stuff for you guys. And as for the question of the day, as you can see, I am running Prism Star Solgaleo in this deck, and it got me thinking, okay, I mean, I know that there are going to be more coming out, and I believe it's called Forbidden Light is the set that is coming out, and it's like Volcanion and a couple others as well. And so it got me wondering what other Prism Star mons will be coming out and what mons uh, really I would like to see get Prism Stars. And so my question of the day is, what mon do you guys want to see get a Prism Star card? And if you had to ask me, I would say that I want Keldeo to get a Prism Star card. And for any of you that know me, this answer comes as absolutely no surprise because Keldeo is one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. I mean, it just... It really is. Like, there's a reason that it was my mascot for so long. I mean, I know I'm the coach of the Duke Blue Dwebbles, but that's just because I couldn't think of anything good with Keldeo, so I decided to go with my favorite sports team instead of my favorite Pokemon. But yeah, Keldeo is my favorite Pokemon, hands down. And so I'd really like to see it get a Prism Star print and see what type of cool stuff they decide to do with it. So yeah, that's my answer. I would like to see a Prism Star Keldeo. What mons do you guys want to see get a Prism Star print? It doesn't even have to be a legendary, even though that seems to be the trend. So I mean, if you guys want to see a different Prism Star card, just let me know in the comment section down below. And I mean, if you feel like uh, describing what you'd like to see it do, that'd be awesome as well. So yeah, wh I want to see Keldeo, not sure what it would do, but I do think that Keldeo could be an awesome Prism Star card. Let me know in the comment section down below and why. Love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. But anyway, on to the deck. Like I said, this is a deck centered around Duskmane, Necrozma GX, and M Magnezone. And this was based on a list that I found on Pokebeach.com. So shout outs to the author. Forgot to write that down. So I do apologize if you guys know who the author of that article was. Please leave that in uh, the description or in the comments below so that I can give that guy credit. But really, I've already done a Duskmane Necrozma deck. But this one is centered around Magnezone and just attaching a bunch of energy per turn and getting a quicker setup as opposed to the setup that I tried to go with, which was Metagross, which actually ended up working out pretty well for me. So I'm interested to see how this version of the deck goes. And so obviously the whole strategy around it, it's a very simple strategy. You just Meteor Tempest repeatedly with Duskmane Necrozma and use Magnezone's Magnetic Circuit to attach as many metal energy per turn as you can from your hand. So really, the power of this deck is just a matter of getting energy into your hand, and once you have a Magnezone set up, which, I mean, only have to get one Stage 2 set up, so by turn 2, you can be attaching a ton of energy, which can be very, very strong if you do get the energy in order to attach them. So I'm just going to go down the lines of Mons as I mean, in order. So we're starting off with, I am running a copy of Dialga GX, just because Timeless GX is a little bit easier to run in this deck. And when I say easier, I mean, like, you can e more easily get uh, five energy onto Dialga because of Magnetic Circuit. In the Metagross deck, you were limited in your attachments. You had to uh, just attach to the active. So, I mean, it was somewhat limited in that regard. Whereas with this one, you can attach as many energy per turn as you would like as long as you have it in your hand. So I mean if you have 5 energy in your hand and you do have a Magnezone you can just attach them all to Dialga GX and then go for a Timeless GX which is pretty cool just be able to get another turn after hopefully getting a quick knockout. And what's nice about this deck is it does not get shut down by Glaceon at all. Yes it does still get shut down by Garbodor so that's kind of an issue. But it doesn't get shut down by Glaceon at all, so at the very least you will have the ability for one turn, I mean, assuming you don't go second and your opponent gets a turn to Garbodor Floatstone, which, I mean, is a very real possibility. But well, basically what I'm trying to say is this deck isn't shut down by Glaceon, so you have a little more time to potentially be able to set up and get your Mons powered up and attacking. So that's pretty nice. And then also, like I said, with Dialga, you're able to more 
realistically get a Timeless GX than you would with Metagross. And then of course we have the main attacker of the deck, Duskmane Necrozma. Basically the goal of the deck, just Meteor Tempest over and over and over. With the Choice Band it pretty much knocks out everything in the game except for I believe like maybe even Fighting Belt, Fighting Fury Belt, Wishy Washy. It might be the only thing that can live off the top of my head, but I mean, I'm sure there are some other combos that you can pull in order to survive. Uh, then we're running 3-3 of Magnemite and Magnezone. I was wondering why are there no Magneton? Well, I read through the article and they said there is no time for Magneton. You have to go straight from Magnemite to Magnezone, and with a 3-3 line as well as four rare candy, you should be able to get that Magnezone turn to. You should have enough resources and high enough amounts of those resources in order to be able to get it consistently so that's why we're running a very heavy line of these guys even though you only need one this is so reliant on getting that up turn two that we want to maximize our chances of doing so also running one copy of Solgaleo prism star because one weakness in this deck is that you are not able to attach from the discard pile i mean you can get them out of the discard pile with mount coronet which i will get to but you can't mass attach from the discard pile, so with Mount Cornet as your only real means of recursion from the discard pile, we can run a single copy of Solgaleo uh, Prism Star in order to be able to use Radiant Star. If there's a ton of energy in the discard pile, we can just get those all back onto our mons with a single attack. And also, it's a way of getting around um, things like, well, Safeguard mons, which admittedly Diaga can get around with Shred, and also you have Magnezone with the ability to do that as well as Zap Cannon can Oko them. And also I want to point out Magnezone only has two retreat cost, which is, not gonna lie, that's pretty nuts that Magnezone only has a two retreat cost. I, I'm just recognizing that because, I mean, most of the time, let's be real, I float Stone or Guzma out of it when I've been testing, but Magnezone with two retreat cost, that is nuts but anyway back to Solgaleo just being able to recur a ton of energy in one turn is very very strong for the deck three Tapu Lele absolute max number so that we can maximize our odds of getting Bridget into or Lele into Bridget on the first turn and being able to get Magnemite, Remoraid, and Duskmane Necrozma immediately 1-1 one, one of Remoraid and Octillery for some extra draw support and I'll speed up a little bit because I am talking for way too long one field blower to get rid of items pesky things like choice band and more uh more particularly I don't even know if that's proper English but I don't even care uh get rid of that float stone or the item that is on Garbodor that locks us out of our abilities one professor's letter in order to be able to get two energy from the deck just another way of getting more energy into our hand to be able to magnetic circuit for a rare candy like i said maximize our odds of getting a magnemite into a magnezone on turn two one rescue stretcher for our method of recursion with our mons we really don't need that much recursion in this deck as it's not really reliant on consistent like stage twos or stage ones or anything like that so one rescue stretcher is sufficient for ultra ball to guarantee get what we want when we want for mount coronet absolute max number so that we can recur the metal energy from our discard pile and win the stadium war more than likely so that we will be able to consistently get our metal energies after we discard them with Duskmane Necrozma's attack to Bridget to uh, minimize our odds of having that prized. 4-4-4 four, four, four of Cynthia, Guzma, and N because this deck really doesn't like to discard a whole lot of resources. It likes to have those consistently so that you are able to, well, I mean, so it prefers shuffle draw so that you don't get rid of your uh, resources early. That being said, there still is a Sycamore because I mean seven cards is seven cards. And then a whopping three Skyla, once again, to work with things like Rare Candy, Professor's Letter, just maximize your odds of being able to get that turn to Magnezone that this deck is so reliant on. One Choice Band and one Floatstone Choice Band for the damage output, because you really don't need the extra 30 damage in a lot of cases, because, I mean, 220 is plenty for the knockout in many, many cases, like I said, but against Stage 2 GX decks, Having a choice band can be the difference between a one-hit knockout and a two-hit knockout, which is very, very nice. And then one float stone just for free retreat on, like, Octillery and Magnezone. But again, these guys actually don't mind it all that much due to having two retreat cost each. It's more for, like, Diago with three, Necrozma with three, and then Solgaleo with three. And finally, ten metal energy. You can definitely run more. In fact, I would... I've been testing and I kind of like 10 energy, so we'll we'll see how that goes in this live, but I, I think you can definitely find room for more metal energies in this deck just so you have those. But anyway, talked for way too long, let's go ahead and see this deck in action. 
Alrighty, we have found one against uh, Rafa Perrazzo OP. I mean, I'm guessing that's what they were going for right there. And we are up against a fighting and water deck. So, uh, whoa, what happened there? Alright, well, anyway, I'm just rolling with it. Uh, unfortunately, we do mulligan. I would have actually really liked to have that firsthand because it's something I could truly work with. But... I mean, I guess this one works because I'll be able to get a Bridget and if I can somehow get a Rare Candy and then what are we up against? So we're up against Dugong, which is, uh, well, I mean, it's Dugong, so that's something. I'm going to start with a uh, Dialga and I'll be able to Bridget first turn. I'd like to have a, an Energy, that way I can at least get some stuff moving, get some Energies attached, that type of thing, and then Dialga can be helpful in some situations, but I really don't think in this particular matchup it will help over an insane amount. So my opponent is Sveal? What? Or Seal? Not Sveal. Wow. I didn't even say it right. It's a Seal. But okay, so this works out well, assuming I can get energy. Let's just go ahead and Bridget grab a Magnemite, a Remoraid, and then a Necrozma so that I can start getting some stuff going, and then I'll just pass for the time being. I mean, if I can get... Unfortunately, Choice Band into Dialga's GX attack will not be able to knock out my opponent's Zygarde just because, I mean, that thing is so insanely bulky. So I'll have to find a way to work around that. And my opponent plays Professor's Letter, just grabs two fighting energy, and I'm... I do not know what Dugong does. Like, I legitimately do not yeah timeless gx is not going to be enough to one shot the zygarde even with the choice band so i can't just win in one turn and okay so i can work with this let's go ahead and ultra ball get rid of the cynthia and the choice band i think i'm going to grab an octillery just so i can have those extra cards rare candy that's 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 a necrozma that's not a uh, magnemite let's rare candy the magnemite up into our magna zone evolve the remoraid into octillery and then well, actually first things first let's go ahead and magnetic circuit to attach the energy i think I might just attach it to the dialga so at the very least i can just get six cards refill my hand up to six if i need to okay i get an ultra ball let's get rid of the cynthia and the lele i really don't need to see tapu lele anymore grab okay so two necrozma are prized um do i want to try to set up another magnemite or do I want to grab the Solgaleo Prism? I'm going to grab the uh, Prism Star, Solgaleo, play that down, and then just Cynthia, see if I can draw into some more energy. And I get one. <laughs> I get a single energy, so let's just attach that to the attach that to the Necrozma, and then I'm going to go ahead and shuffle, these, uh, shuffle the Lele back into my deck just because I want to take advantage of my Dialga as best as possible. Let's overclock get a couple more cards see if we can get something we can work with and unfortunately not so I need three more energy in order to be able to attack with either Dialga or my Necrozma we see the wishful baton come down it's not going to quite knock out my Dialga just yet and why am I having trouble with a Zygarde Dugong deck I really I really don't know and a team flare grunt comes out gets rid of my energy I mean that doesn't matter a whole lot because hopefully I can get my stadium and be able to recycle energy but I'm actually having trouble with this deck which is kind of hysterical just because I'm not not drawing into a whole lot of anything it's pretty clunky I could grab something but I really really don't feel the need to so let's just go ahead and Lele I want to get a sycamore just because I mean my hand yeah there's a couple Guzma that I can use later but I I'm, I'm tired of the shuffle draw I just need to draw into something good see if I can get some more energy in did I whiff completely on energy I whiffed wow so gonna play the uh, Mount Coronet to get the uh, single energy back and really wow I whiffed completely on getting energy so now I just have to attach the single energy to my Necrozma and that's all I can do. So, yeah, my po like, why am I having trouble with this deck? I mean, I guess I'm just not drawing into the energy. And, yeah, my opponent does finally get the duo. Okay, what does it do? Freezing Breath. Okay, so it's a uh, 
basically it's a dugong lock is what it's going for my opponent just hits me knocks me out and yeah we are officially losing to a <laughs> to a dugong necrozma deck or a dugong zygarde deck so that is honestly kind of hysterical but i do get an energy and i'm finally just gonna skyla and wait so i have four energy prized that explains a lot of four of my energy 40 percent of the energy I run in this deck are prized. That's kind of awful. So I'm going to get another Magnezone up just in case I need to uh, attack with something else. Because, I mean, let's be real, I don't have another Necrozma. I'm going to attach a couple energy to this guy. And actually, first, let's Abyssal Hand with my Octillery, see if I can get something good. Not particularly. And then let's just Sun's Eclipse GX, because I think at this point, now that I have a Necrozma going, I'm going to be able to... Uh, just continually recycle my energy to where I should be actually up on prizes and I don't won't need to use that GX stack and there's a Necrozma and the uh, steel or the metal energy sorry it's the TCG it's metal energy uh, <laughs> so I mean kind of regretting playing that second Magnemite down but at the same time I mean it really I hope it hopefully won't come back to be a huge difference and my opponent is going to go for it gets tail so I'm asleep do I wake up no because if I woke up I just won the game right there and my opponent doesn't have any other mons on the field so I can't even Guzma my way out of it so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and yeah just pass because what I the only thing that I can do later is I don't even know, because, I mean, he's just going to go for Freezing Breath if he paralyzes me because of the Guzma. Yep, he paralyzes me, and because Guzma has to bring something else out, I cannot retreat, so I literally just have to pass. Like, there is... I mean, there's nothing I can do. There's really nothing. I have Guzma in my hand to get out of it, and my opponent finally plays a Pokemon fan club, which is something that I can end up working around. But, man, that was just annoying, just having to... Uh, Dugong, very, very, very annoying. Kind of wish I had that uh, Dawn Wings Necrozma so that I could just come in and uh, free treat so I wouldn't have to worry about paralysis or sleep. But alas, we do not get that. And my opponent's just continually getting that. If I can get a sleep flip in my favor, like if I, he can put me to sleep and then I immediately wake up, then I will be able to take out my opponent's uh, Dugong and... I mean, I can Guzma my way out of this, but it doesn't get rid of the Dugong, which is the problem. Like, which is the issue. So what I'm going to do, I guess I'm just going to bring up this Vulpix so that I don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's attach energy onto Octillery, retreat back out into my Necrozma, and then just, well, Mount Cornet, get the energy back. That way I can have something else powered up for the inevitability that my opponent is probably just going to end up locking me. And then, yeah, let's just go ahead and knock out the Vulpix, take a take another prize, and, well, there's my energy. Would have been nicer earlier, but unfortunately we did not get that. So, yeah, the Dugong is just becoming insanely annoying right now. I mean, I'm, I'm finding it hysterical that I'm actually having trouble against my opponent's deck. And I do just need him to, okay, stop paralyzing me, put me to sleep, and let me wake up because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to get out of it, and I'm just going to draw and pass. I could be attaching the energy, but I kind of want to wait to attach it to another Necrozma. Uh, but we see... Okay, he's getting a Machoke, and he's starting to power that thing up, so this is actually going to come down to the wire. Please, okay, sleep. Now wake up. Wake up. And I don't wake up, so that... That sucks. Kind of wish I was playing a uh, skateboard. So, yeah, I'm just going to pass. My opponent is going to be able to knock me out. And freaking Dugong is going to 1v1 my Necrozma GX. Like, that's that's dumb. And we see the Machamp GX even get brought up as well. So, yeah, this is awful. Like, I, mm, I am legitimately baffled by what is going on right now. The fact that I can't... Yeah, the fact that I couldn't do that. Like, that's that's just... That's shocking to me. Uh, but what I can do is I can finally get rid of this freaking dugong. Like, I'm... Ooh, I'm, I'm salty right now. I'm very salty at what's going down. But uh, with my Prism Solgaleo, I will be able to keep my opponent from damaging a two-prize uh, two GX. Uh, force my opponent to deal with the Solgaleo Prism Star if he does. 
uh, just Guzma up a GX. Well, I guess if he Guzmas up my Lele, then I just lose. So let's just attach to the Necrozma. Ultra Ball, get rid of the Magnemite and Magnazone. Grab the Lele. And there is no energy left in my deck. I was just just making sure. So let's just grab the Lele. Uh, do I want a Cynthia? I think I actually want to hold on to that. And then let's go ahead and finally knock out this uh, dugong that was causing so many problems take another prize and there's a rare candy so wow that's that was that was rough that was very very rough um, Machamp is gonna come out he's gonna be able to well the nice thing is he has to GX attack I think in order to be able to knock out my uh, Solgaleo Prism Star so I mean if he gets I mean he tier knows so he can't Guzma and like again my opponent is not playing a competitive deck, but we are legitimately having trouble with this, and I find that honestly hilarious. So, <laughs> let's promote my uh, Solgaleo, or my, not my Solgaleo, my Necrozma, let's Lele for an N, just because, I mean, I want to put my opponent down to one card. Like, that's, the only way he can win right now is if he's able to Guzma up my Octillery. And, I mean, if he does do that, then, I mean, that's, then I lose. So I just have to minimize the opportunities that he does have in order to be able to do that. I mean, I'm not even trying to draw into anything off of my N just because, I mean, I have no energy left in my deck. Like, it was all prized or in the discard pile. So I'm just going to do that, put him down to a single card, limit the options that he has to work with. And, I mean, this is... We're, we're honestly like having so much trouble with this, which is funny, but I think we are eventually going to be able to pull this out simply because I do have uh, the Mount Cornet for next turn to be able to get two Metal Energy back into my hand, and then I will be able to knock out the Machamp with my Meteor Tempest. And yeah, he can attach the strong energies, but Bedrock Breaker is not going to be able to knock me out. And I'm actually really, really glad that I have the Mount Cornet in my hand because he does discard that and so I'm able to immediately just play that back down get two metal energies and we're actually going to be able to uh, finish this game off I man this was this was an interesting this was an interesting match I mean I having that many energy prized I mean just I guess that tells me I need to run more energy in this deck I mean I thought 10 was sufficient but clearly it is not I'm gonna have to start running more in decks and yep they're my last two metal energy about time you guys decided to show up to the party but yeah we eventually were able to come back in the game and take that i mean it was it was a rough one it was a rough one for sure but that was that was game one let's hope that we have a little bit better luck in the following games and i'm just going to try to find another one with this deck Alrighty, we have found another one against a JSE27 with a Grass, Water, and Normal deck, and hopefully this goes a little bit better than the last one. I mean, I can't, ultimately I can't complain because we were able to come out victorious in that one, but, I don't know, still just kind of felt like we could do a little bit better, and we start off with, well, not the greatest, I kind of like to save... Prism Star Solgaleo for later, but ultimately it's not a horrible starting Mon. Just because, I mean, it's only one prize and you are able to take advantage of it later. So let's go ahead, Ultra Ball, get rid of a Cynthia and a Guzma to grab... What do I want to grab? Let's grab, I guess... Do I want to grab a Magnemite or do I want to grab an Octillery? Because I have the Lele into Bridget think what I'm going to do is grab Octillery. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. Because, I mean, I even have the draw supporter for next turn, too. So, let's go ahead and Lele into the Bridget. Ah, uh, Bridget's right there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> just kind of missed that. So, let's go ahead and grab that Bridget. Um, play that down. Get a Remoraid, a Magnemite, and a Necrozma, I think. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that attach the energy and I have the muscle or the choice band for next turn and it's just a matter of where do I want to attach the energy I think I might just go ahead and throw it onto the necrozma yeah let's go ahead and do that and then choice band see if we can bait out my opponent's field blower early that way I can save my mount coronets for later maybe keep them on the field to where my opponent either has to counter the stadium or use his last field blower but regardless um, pretty solid start. Do have an Octillery. Hopefully I'll be able to get 
a Magnezone next turn with a Rare Candy into that. And my opponent just attaches and Cynthia's, which is great for me, considering that my opponent was not able to bridge at turn one and get a ton of stuff out. So it looks like it's a Lurantis Galisopod deck with a... Is that a Kangaskhan? I think that's a Kangaskhan. It really might be a Kangaskhan on my opponent's bench, so... Not fully sure what all tech my opponent is running. I mean, the grass could be... Or the grass is obviously Lurantis and Glycopod. I'm wondering what the water could be. The water could be either a... I don't even know. The water could be Octillery. Um, I'm actually thinking it's Octillery because that's normally what the type you would see. And I do get Octillery. Well, I mean, I... <laughs> I had Octillery from last turn, but I do get Skylo is what I was trying to say. So if I can somehow get a Magnezone, um, well, that works. I mean, what I was going to say is if I could somehow get an Ultra Ball for a Magnezone or draw into the Rare Candy, I could Skyla for the missing piece, but I guess I could just straight up Octillery into them. And then I'm going to leave that last spot open on my bench for something else uh, instead of playing the Necrozma down, but I guess I just draw right back into it. And unfortunately, we do not get sufficient energy in order to be able to attack at all. I mean, would even just one more, and at this point I'm just like, well, might as well play the second Necrozma. I mean, I drew right into it off the Cynthia anyway, so I guess that's the game's way of telling me, hey, hey, you should play this down. You should play this down right now. And yeah, I'm just gonna roll with it, I guess. Um, my opponent is starting to get that uh, Goli well, the Wimpod set up on the bench. We see the Lurantis come in. Uh, ugh. But the thing is, Necrozma is going to be able to one-shot them with or without the Choice Band, so that is pretty nice. And yeah, Mega Kang, or not Mega Kang, if that was Mega Kang, I'd be pretty impressed. But just regular Kangaskhan is not that big of a threat. Choice Band onto the Wimpod, probably going to become a Golisopod. And if I was my opponent, I would just start, I would just start trying to set up as much as possible because I'm not drawing into a whole lot of energy. And oh, okay, there's a. There's an Eevee, which is probably going to be Leafeon for the Grand Bloom GX, because, I mean, that's a very strong setup. If you can get a couple Lurantises and a Gal and a Wimpod down, or a couple Fomantises and a Wimpod down, you can Grand Bloom first turn, which is very, very strong. So that's going to be... That would be uh, something that would be very bad if that happened to me. But, all right, my opponent is just playing down... The Wimpod grabbing a Golisopod. I mean, that was kind of to be expected with the Heavy Ball. And, yeah, I've got not a lot. I'm kind of hoping that I can get a Float Stone plus a couple Energies. That way I can take a Knockout this coming turn. But he even gets the Float Stone onto the Lurantis, which means that Golisopod's going to be able to come in and do 120 damage to me. And honestly, I would rather have this Solgaleo get damaged than my Necrozma. And he is just going to Flower Supply. Does he have any energy in the discard pile, or did he just attack? Because actually, yeah, I mean, he just Flower Supplies. I mean, I guess leaves or keeps the Golisopod out of rain, or out of harm's way, out of the active spot. And again, no more energy. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of look through my deck, see like see where my energy is. Um, well, just, yeah, mill that, and then Octillery, see if I can draw into a couple more, because, I mean, i got to draw some energy, and I get one. That is not enough, so I'm just going to attach to Solgaleo and pass. If my opponent wants to come up, knock out my Solgaleo Prism Star, then I guess, then I guess that's his prerogative. I mean, I do have Cynthia to hopefully be able to draw into another energy next turn. My opponent at this point has a Lurantis two Golisopods, and an Eevee on board. I mean, I, admittedly, I'm set up. Like, I'm a lot better set up than my opponent because, I mean, I have the Magazone, I have the Octillery, I have two uh, Necrozmas, but I'm just not drawing into energy or any ways of getting my Solgaleo out of the active in order to be able to attack, so I'm just kind of sitting on my hands right here and waiting. If I can top deck an energy then that would be phenomenal because what I could do is Guzma up the Golisopod with the Choice Band and knock that out with Solgaleo. And then that way I'm initiating, I am forcing my opponent into certain... I'm, for, I'm forcing my opponent to respond to my Necrozma, which he cannot knock out in one hit. And he is just going to go make the right play, go into his Golisopod, knock me out with a first impression. 
and he's going to take a prize. So now, I'm actually going to be able to knock out this Golisopod regardless because my opponent did take a prize. So that's going to work out nicely for me. But again, I really, really would like to have some more energy. And I'm going to save my end for a little bit later at this point. I don't think I necessarily need it. And I still don't draw into energy. Man, is like... I'm, I guess the theme of this live is where is all my energy? Like, I legitimately do not know where my energy is. I mean, unless I have four prized like I did last game. Uh, but let's go ahead and field blower. Just see if I can fish for that last energy because I kind of want to save. I kind of want to save my GX attack. But, I mean, again, I still want more energy and I still don't get any. So let's just go ahead and Ultra Ball get rid of two ends. Um, probably just grab a Lele or a Dialga. I, actually, yeah, Dialga's better because if I need to, I can use its GX attack later. Let's just play that down. And, uh, yeah, let's just Sun's Eclipse knock out this Golispot. I didn't want to have to use my Sun's Eclipse GX because I kind of wanted to give Dialga a shot. But I'm just going to go into my prizes. I get one energy. So that's, I mean, at the very least, I'll be able to Meteor Tempest this next turn and take a, a one-hit knockout on Lorantis or Golisopod or Leafeon, whatever my opponent decides to bring up. So that's nice at the very least. But man, just still, still no energy. Just still being a, barely scratching the surface. So I guess, again, that's the game's way of telling me I need to run more energy. I mean, one sixth of the deck is energy is not enough. Probably should run closer to like 13, 14, maybe even, maybe even 15. Just go a straight one fourth of my deck being energy and see how that goes but my opponent is just going to retreat into his Golispod. first impression my soul galeo but i will be able to take the knockout on this guy and there's my skyla so what i'm going to do is let's just attach the energy to the necrozma and then let's skyla for my professor's letter and it's not there so no professor's letter and man 20 cards or 21 cards left in my deck and six of them are energy so let's see if i can ultra ball get rid of a couple get rid of my ends to see if i can draw into some energy with my octillery i mean my odds are getting better and better so all all of my uh energy is in play i just need to draw into it and there we go so i do get an energy i'm gonna start powering up i think yeah let's start powering up the necrozma that's on the bench and then let's meteor tempest knock out my opponent's Golisopod, and I mean we're in a very good position now I think I think we're in a I think we're in a very winning position as long as I draw into an energy and actually I get the professor's letter which is very nice so I can guaranteed get an energy from my deck with that professor's letter and then Mount Coronet can give me two energy or two metal energy back and yeah we're in a very good position so I couldn't draw energy for a long time once again but I am finally able to to get what I need in order to eventually pull out this game. So, yeah, I mean, the energy is all there, just never drew into it, really. And then, luckily, we are not up against decks that were exerting so much pressure that I needed the energy at a given point. I was able to slowly just draw into it and then make the minimum plays necessary, the minimum attachments necessary, in order to successfully uh, attack and take prizes when I needed them. So... Yeah, my opponent is not sure what they're doing. They're, they play Glaceon, so that's the water type? Well, I mean, I guess they don't rely on any EX or GX abilities, but that means absolutely nothing for my deck. Because I will be able to... Yeah, I mean, my deck doesn't rely on EX or GX abilities apart from Tapu Lele. And even then, Glaceon still has to be active, so if my opponent does go for the Chlorocyte GX and knock out my uh, and knock out my Solgaleo or not Solgaleo my Necrozma I'm still gonna have Lele available because of not being under ability lock so my opponent just has to end me into something I absolutely cannot work with in order to keep me from winning this game but at the same time I have enough outs that I should be able to draw into one energy and then again I say that but clearly no 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 I am I am connected to the internet. You are not you are not disconnecting me to the internet. Come on. You you can do this. Just stay connected. We're so close. Just stay connected for okay, much better. Stay connected for one more turn and then we can 
win the game. So my opponent does just attach to the Lurantis, but at this point it doesn't matter. I do have the Professor's Letter to get two energy. I even top deck an energy. So I'm just going to go ahead and put two back into my hand from the discard pile. Don't even need the Professor's Letter at all. And then let's Magnetic Circuit. Put all three onto this Necrozma and then win the game with a Meteor Tempest. So once again, drawing into energies was difficult. Getting energy in order to attack was difficult. I guess you clearly need to run more than just 10 metal energies into this deck in order for it to uh, attack consistently, but still able to come away with two victories, albeit against not the most competitive decks. But hey, two wins is two wins. I am taking it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.